last time on Big Data and Brews. Mike Olson of Cloudera shared the company's secret to success. One is just the quality of the people you can attract, right? How well can you hire, how talented are the people you're able to bring into the organization. How big data broke for them. I think the key insight we had in 2008 and, and into 2009 was, first of all, the traditional enterprises were going to have big data problems and, and that Hadoop was going to be the right platform for them. And his initial thoughts on MapReduce. The key failure, I think, of those of us in the relational industry, when the, this paper was published in 2004 by Google, mm -hmm. was assuming that there was somehow a law of physics that that was all you could do. And now, here's more Big Data and Brews. Welcome back to Big Data and Proofs with uh, Mike Olson from Codera. Cheers. Cheers, man. It's, isn't that great? You know, this, I came up with this idea doing Big Data and Proofs, uh, obviously German heritage, drinking beer at work and, you know, creating some thought leader content at the same time. That's not fantastic. Too, not too bad. I, 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 I told my PR staff, that I really have no choice. I have to drink at work. Yeah. Right? It's, a, it's a requirement. Yeah. I'm not sure what the legal impact is, but let's ignore us for now. Um, <laughs> so, so, so we talked uh, we talked about SQL a, a little bit in the last segment, but um, one more thing I want to dive into is um, now there's Hive, and you guys support Hive. Yes. Um, you have Impala as well, yeah. um, but my understanding is Impala has the same SQL dialect slash engine, right, um, for, as Hive. Uh, no. no, so okay. no, it's it's okay. uh, an entirely different ground up implementation. But I'll, okay. I'll, I'll go I'll go into detail if you want. Um, but it, I mean I mean the big question here is really everybody has its own little SQL story now. Yeah. Um, I think that was one of the really challenging um, things at the at the database world that you obviously have um, tremendous experience. How do you see this? Is it coming together? Is that is that a problem for customers? So. Look, I think the the brutally frank answer is no, it's not going to come together. Um, the deal is there is so much money in the SQL query processing market, and there are such large entrenched players mm -hmm. uh, that there's huge interest in exclusive control over the different engines in the market, mm -hmm. um, which means nobody wants to collaborate really with anybody else because mm -hmm. they'd like to have their differentiated offering. The, the traditional vendors, think IBM and Oracle and Teradata and others, have decades invested in really high performance query processing and analysis. Mm -hmm. And they'd love to move that to a big data platform, mm -hmm. right? Our point of view is that in the long term, any native SQL engine running on the Hadoop infrastructure, right, in, in what we call an enterprise data hub, right, one place to land all your data, any native SQL implementation has to be competitive on performance mm -hmm. with those engines, right? If you think about where SQL on Hadoop came from, so at Facebook, they needed to mm -hmm. type SQL queries against their... Yeah, they had a whole data, bunch of right? MySQL developers, yeah. right? And, and at the time, by the way, mm -hmm. Hadoop was MapReduce plus the storage layer. That was all. That's it, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they did what you would do, right? They wrote some code that sat on top of MapReduce that took queries and turned them into MapReduce jobs. Mm -hmm. Batch mode, high latency, complex processing. It's not that it worked well, but hey man, an elephant that can dance at all is a pretty remarkable thing. Yeah. So Hive was born on MapReduce mm -hmm. and was designed for the MapReduce kind of high latency mm -hmm. execution framework. It was mm -hmm. designed to basically submit batch jobs to MapReduce. Okay, that's where we were. Um, if you look at what Google runs internally for their infrastructure, and they invented MapReduce and mm -hmm. the storage layer, right? They built a distributed query processing engine, uh, began called F1 and evolved into something called Spanner. But it is a native distributed query processing engine, mm -hmm. right? Built from the ground up to run in parallel on the same hardware infrastructure, but not to rely on MapReduce, yeah. right? Special purpose engine, the thinking went, is going to outperform any general purpose engine with a thin layer on top. Sure. Right. Uh, and, they, and they've demonstrated that was true. And that, and that was our intent with Impala. So mm -hmm. Impala v. Hive, that was a very easy decision for mm -hmm. us. Um, of course, the Hive ecosystem is evolving now as well. Yeah. yeah. But isn't, you know, isn't what really holds us back here the storage layer? I mean, it's a sequential file system. If you do, if you want to do a random access to it, I mean, you have to do a whole bunch of network hubs to do seeks. Isn't that really what holds us back architecturally at this point to make any meaningful SQL on top of that? And if we replace that, don't we have 
another green plum, Vertica, or Astrodata or Teradata here. So, what's the difference between you know a, a native SQL and Hadoop? Um, oh, I lost my chalk. Hang on, I'll just grab another one out. So, I was just gonna, I was just gonna, for the record, for the people watching uh, on television, note. Hive sits on top of MapReduce, mm -hmm. at least original generation, uh, and Impala is a native engine. So, mm -hmm. so you ask a good question, right? Transactional storage is sort of fundamental to relational databases, mm -hmm. or at least the relational databases that we think about. You know, when you when you think about Oracle and Just SQL Server yeah. inference, right? Hive isn't used for update intensive workloads. Right, yeah. it's used kind of for batch mode data transformation and some, you know, large yeah. query reporting. Our vision for Impala is likewise not an OLTP engine, right? It's yeah. an analytic database. Mm -hmm. So I want to mostly read, and when I read, I want to run sophisticated anal analyses. I want to create, you know, window functions and, and look mm -hmm. at the data, right? Um, the key missing feature from the storage layer, frankly, mm -hmm. is transactions. Mm -hmm. right? Now, Doug Cutting, the Hadoop, mm -hmm. one of the Hadoop project founders, uh, Clutter chief architect, uh, has gone on record as saying he believes that the storage layer will offer transactions at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I'm an old guard database guy. Mm -hmm. That is hard. Yeah. That is just blindingly hard. So, I think mm -hmm. that what happens in the near term is for Analytic workloads, very good interactive SQL is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that Hive, which has dramatically improved performance lately because it has swapped out the MapReduce engine for a second generation. Tez. Uh, yeah. yeah, Tez, and, and we're going to be working on a, po a port to uh, Spark. Uh, has, it, it's not burdened by all of the latencies in MapReduce, mm -hmm. but it's still on top of a quasi batch mode engine yeah. and well, and, yeah. the, the whole storage is kind of optimized for batch from the beginning, right? That's that's the challenge, though. Large sequential transfers, yeah. right? Appended and mostly workloads, right? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so that's why I'm really question how far can we get with this? Because if you, <clears throat> I mean, you know, oversimplified the way the HDFS work is like a like a tape drive, right? Right. Um, yeah. So uh, it's actually the, not that oversimplified, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we want to have, you know, the skip function of a CD, we can't really build this on top of, you know, on, on top of a tape. So, um, <clears throat> and then again, if we, if we take all of this apart, then, you know, we already had the green plum and, you know, it was kind of a decent um, analytic da database at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, well, so I say a couple things. So first of all, there where, are where, things you Where are the advantages then? Where, where's the whole schema on read, the, the beauty of, um, you know, all the unstructured data? So again, I don't claim that SQL should be the only way, but mm -hmm. I, I do think it's an important way. Mm -hmm. and, and schema is a valuable addition to data you manage here. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to require it, but if you can exploit it, that's great, mm -hmm. right? Um, this storage layer, is getting better quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, a year and a half or more ago, uh, a couple years ago, um, we began working on uh, adding performance enhancements. Most recently, we have included read caching, in-memory mm -hmm. read caches for HDFS. Mm -hmm. um, and that was largely a cloud ad driven project. Mm -hmm. um, there's work going on by some engineers at Hortonworks right now to add write to in-memory, basically sort mm -hmm. of write caching yeah. as well. Uh, the addition of good memory management to the mm -hmm. storage layer yeah. really helps these guys. Yeah. It doesn't solve the transaction problem. Yeah. And, and that's the problem I think is hard. So when will this overtake traditional OLTP? When when you know when would Oracle or SQL Server have to work? You know what? I think those days are a pretty far away away. Just yeah. me, right? Yeah. But um, I do think we can do really important analytic and processing and transformation workloads given the tools we've got today. Mm -hmm.